Kicking off today's event will be Mark Mackey, Chief Executive Officer for the Spokane Workforce Council, covering the importance of the aerospace industry in our region and the outlook for the future workforce. Mark has served in leadership role for the past 15 years, bringing together private and public partners to transform the regional talent development system and ensure that the dynamic workforce needs of businesses are met and individuals have the skills to succeed in the 21st century economy. Mark is an active member of several national, state, and local organizations, including the U.S. Conference of Mayors Workforce Development Council, National Association of Workforce Boards, and the Northwest Business Development Association. In his spare time, he raises horses, works on projects around the ranch, and enjoys skiing, boating, and camping with his wife and two daughters. Let's give it up for Mark. Space. This is one of the most exciting industries in our country and really in the world. My job as the CEO of the Spokane Workforce Council, as Noe said, is to keep my finger on the pulse of what makes our regional economy flourish and help businesses find the talent they need to grow. Aerospace is at the heart of our strategic investment strategies for the greater Spokane inland Northwest region as the vital sector that drives our economic growth and offers good paying long-term jobs for its workforce. These truly are the jobs of the future as aerospace is always on the cutting edge of developing and deploying new technologies. Today, I wanna to provide you with a snapshot of this industry in our area to help inform your thinking about the next steps in your own career journey. So please uh, ask questions um, in the chat as we go through this. I'm happy to answer questions um, during or at the end, um, but really this is all about hopefully helping you to get a better idea of, of what this industry offers. I'm now gonna share my screen or try to. No, are we good? Cool. Looking good. All right. So I wanted you to first get an image of the area that I'm located in and we'll be highlighting the most. And this is where the majority of my data comes from that I'll be sharing with you. And it's an area where we share many of the same industries, including aerospace and advanced manufacturing. You can see from the map where Spokane is located kind of right in the heart of the inland Northwest. And then to our east is North Idaho, that includes Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls on the I-90 corridor, and then goes up through Bonner and Boundary counties to the Canyon border, then goes down through Moscow and Pullman and Lewis and Clarkston, and the west back into Washington into Kennewick and the Tri-Cities. So this really is the anchor point for our um, aerospace manufacturing industry. It's across the breadth of the inland Northwest. Aerospace is one of the largest sectors in our national economy and offers a multitude of career opportunities across a number of diverse subsectors. So you can see here, I've outlined five of them. Advanced manufacturing uh, uses cutting edge technology and production processes to design and build aircraft, rockets, and satellites. Research and development is critical for the success of the industry, and that's really pushing the envelope and utilizing new technologies and pioneering the use of new materials uh, in support of those. Commercial aircraft, of course, is huge. I'm sure you've all heard of Boeing. Uh, just on the west side of Washington State where the headquarters is. And they're adapting new technology to decrease weight, improve performance of aircraft, and are even exploring biofuels to reduce carbon emissions. Defense applications are also very important across this industry, and they're working to develop the next generation systems to keep us safe and reduce threats around the world. And then lastly, space is also important. We're pushing the boundaries by developing new orbital vehicles and planning for the next steps of exploring our own solar system including the possibility of a manned mission to Mars sometime in the future. Hopefully I'll live to see that. Very exciting stuff happening in the space front. So I wanna zoom into, into Spokane for just a moment. We are the second largest aerospace cluster in Washington state and the fifth largest in the US. As you can see by this uh, slide here, we have over 120 companies in the aerospace sector serving as a vital component of the supply chain to produce some of the most sophisticated machines in the world. Uh, we manufacture parts, we manufacture auxiliary equipment, we manufacture uh, air transport aircraft, and then do a lot of maintenance, repair, and overhaul, which is actually taking care of the jets that we all fly on whenever we go somewhere. They bed down for the night and have to be uh, routinely maintained to make sure they're still safe. And we do a lot of that work as well. So um, there's, there's quite a nexus of activity here in Spokane around the aerospace industry. Uh, you can see on the map here again, we're located on the very far eastern side of the state uh, with the counties around us and then Puget Sound to the west there is where Boeing is located. And every day there's parts and supplies going back and forth 
either via rail or uh, via um, over the over the road trucks, taking the supplies that we manufacture to be put on the planes that are being built at Boeing. So this slide demonstrates how many of our diverse companies in the region support the production of today's commercial aircraft. Each and every one of these companies that's named here actually produces many of the different components, whether it's exteriors, engine parts, interiors, wings, panels, everything from the landing lights to the landing gear. And each one is responsible for meeting the highest quality performance standards that go into the finished aircraft that roll off the tarmac and eventually take flight. And this list is growing all the time. So this, uh, as soon as we create this drawing, it's outdated because more companies come on board as becoming part of the supply chain. So it's very robust. And as you can see, it takes a lot of companies to put an aircraft in the air. Folks often think that, you know, one big company like Boeing or Airbus or Grumman makes the entire plane themselves, assembles it on site. But in fact, many, many companies go in to the production of an aircraft um, or a satellite or whatever the system is that they're working upon in order to make it successful. So it truly takes an entire industry to, to successfully get an aircraft off the ground um, and keep it safe. So tons of opportunity across the board and all the companies that, that go into this. So I want to highlight just two of the subsectors today and let's focus on advanced manufacturing to start. Uh, this is some Spokane County data, some regional data and also Washington data. And you can see um, Spokane has a very high concentration of advanced manufacturing jobs. And advanced manufacturing pays well, nearly 20% more than the overall average wage. Um, we've got anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 openings per year in Spokane County, but across the region, um, up to about 3,200 job openings each year. So there's a lot of opportunity in this sector, and I'll talk a little bit more in detail about the actual jobs themselves a little bit later. Um, I also included Washington State data on this slide. You can see that across Washington State, there's over 200,000 people employed in advanced manufacturing uh, with a higher average wage, anywhere up to 25,000 or so annual opening. So a very robust industry, lots of opportunity in advanced manufacturing all across the board, whether you wanna live um, close to home in the inland Northwest, or even go across the state uh, to the I-5 corridor and, and work um, a little bit closer to where Boeing is located. But lots of opportunity there in advanced manufacturing. The other subsector I want to touch upon is aerospace and defense. And this is a very exciting one. Uh, we've got over 1,400 people employed across our region with a higher average salary than the area average, significantly higher. And then across the state, the sector also pays well. And there's solid growth anticipated well into the future. And defense is very exciting because here's where you see a lot of those new material technologies deployed in support of uh, the, the picture here is of a, a stealth um, aircraft that's designed to evade radar. So it's made with very cutting edge technology in terms of the exterior surfaces that can't be detected by radar. And then of course, um, all the systems inside that support the pilots, including the, um, the, the weapon systems are all very, uh, very high tech. So super exciting work going on in right in our area in support of this critical part uh, of our national defense. So let's shift to looking at just a few of the jobs um, in the industry. There's many, many good jobs in the aerospace sector, starting at very solid wages and benefits for recent college graduates. So those of you who are thinking about transitioning soon and where to go next, um, if you're in engineering, there's a ton of opportunity in this realm. You can see a few of the engineering careers uh, found in this sector. I listed a couple here, mechanical, electrical, industrial, aerospace, and even materials. And, and this data that's here is from across our inland Northwest region. So as you can see, we have over 2,100 engineers employed across these five different occupations. And the average annual wages are starting in the 90s and all the way up to $119,000 a year. So it pays uh, very, very well um, for skilled engineers to work in these different jobs. And these jobs cut across many of the different companies. Uh, and we expect a lot of growth to occur in the foreseeable future as people um, age out of the jobs and retire, and then also as companies grow over the course of time. And the thing about these jobs too is, uh, as I showed you that map earlier, the, the picture of the plane um, with all the different companies, every company has a niche for these individuals to work in it. Um, oftentimes companies, you know, they employ both mechanical and double E's and they've got space for aerospace engineers and material science engineers. So there's just a lot of opportunity for engineering um, careers within the aerospace sector. So I encourage you to take a look at that when you're thinking about where to take that first step.
I also want to highlight careers in IT as um, the IT infrastructure is critical and underpins all the companies in the sector, of course. Uh, having a robust IT network that supports operations is key to their success and growth, as is protecting them against cybersecurity threats and hacking, as we're seeing a lot more external threats than ever before. And every day, it seems in the news, we're hearing about some uh, new external threat from a state actor or otherwise that are trying to hack into our networks. And of course, the intellectual property that a lot of these companies own um, that is the basis for their business needs to be protected and um, the patents kept in place. So uh, a lot of opportunity in IT. Um, we're building our IT uh, regional workforce and currently have over 6,800 people employed in these five occupations with an average annual wage of anywhere from 77 to $105,000. And this is by no means um, all inclusive. There's other jobs within IT infrastructure. I just highlighted a few of them here and I've got more data. Anybody who wants that, I'm happy to share that over the course of time. Um, for other jobs, um, there's tons of support jobs that are out there. There's other jobs um, within the networks and within the different architectures that are deployed out there uh, around IT. Um, database administrators is becoming more and more important. The use of big data uh, for these companies is critical. So I urge you to also consider um, deploying all your talents and support of the companies in the aerospace sector as well if you're in IT. The third group of careers in this industry are found in the physical sciences and aerospace companies, you know, they need skilled scientists as they continue to improve their existing operations and processes. And they're exploring and developing new technologies all the time, including additive manufacturing, 3D printing, the use of robotics and the production processes, and even nanotechnology. Uh, a lot of this is very cutting edge. We, um, we have about 137 people currently employed in our region engaged in these types of physical sciences at aerospace companies. There's a strong annual growth rate in these types of jobs and the annual wages range anywhere from 71,000 to 119,000. And this really is a, a sector that is, is growing um, quite a bit over the last few years as composites. Um, you know, technologies are being used more and more to lighten aircraft and to figure out how to get away from using so much metal in an aircraft. That helps to save fuel, make it more efficient, cost less to operate and also builds in tensile strength um, to, the, to the structures. So please uh, consider this as well as you're looking at uh, possible next steps if you're coming out of one of these uh, disciplines uh, with your college education. So I wanna talk a little bit about um, how to get started. Um, oftentimes I get asked um, by college grads and folks that are even coming up out of high school and such, how do you get into companies um, such as this in order to explore what the job opportunities are? And the first thing that I recommend to do is to start by um, doing your research. You, know, you need to figure out you know, where it is you want to go, with whom you want to speak, figure out who's in the sector. Um, and it may even include companies that don't you know, hit on your radar right away, that don't land, but ones that maybe you know, you'll, you'll find through your research um, as you look into who's all in the area. Oftentimes companies um, don't advertise very well um, about what, what it is they do. They may have a smaller operation or they're just flying you know, underneath the radar. So please do your research and then the best thing you can do is to reach out to companies and actually um, approach them and find out if they offer internships. So while you're still in school, can you indeed go to work for them on a paid basis, hopefully, or unpaid and get some time spent in, um, you know, in that facility, in that company, helping them um, work on projects, helping them to actually carry out work and learning more about their company culture, what their product line is, how they carry out their work. Um, but, you know, the best thing to do is to get on the inside. Um, and do that through an internship. You can also do it through part-time jobs. Oftentimes companies need part-time help uh, during you know, different times of the year and such. And by reaching out to them, you can find out what kind of opportunities they may have um, for, for students to, to come in and work while you're still in school. And then of course, summer jobs. And I can't say enough about going there over the course of the summer and using the time if you're not currently enrolled or have some time um, in between studies to be employed over the course of the summer and prepare yourself for um, the coming year. So you need to ask about you know, opportunities at companies, talk to the HR people, and, and be willing to go outside of your comfort zone. Oftentimes folks are, uh, not the best thing they can do is market themselves. And you really gotta step out there and become a, a self promoter and talk about you know, what you've studied, what you've learned, what your aspirations are, what your goals are, so that a company can really see that you, know, you stand out from the crowd and you'd be a good bet for them. And um, companies, often um, majority of time, I would say, hire from their internship pool or they hire from their part-time pool. They've gotten to know somebody. Um, they understand what their work ethic is and what their skills are. 
and they end up transitioning them into full-time employment. So this will indeed lead to a job, um, you know, many, many times. So please, you know, get out there and actually go to work, um, get your hands dirty, if you will, or, um, or hop on the computer, wherever it might be, and figure out where in your area um, you can talk to companies and hopefully uh, explore your opportunities with them. So I'm checking chat here. Any questions? Um, no way yet. Hi, Mark. Yes, we did have a question uh, came in from Derek, and it said, "Do you have uh, information on internship positions for electrical engineering students?" Yeah, I don't have that info per se, but um, I would recommend that you check with the Career Services Office um, at your institution. They usually track that. If companies are reaching out directly to the college or university, they will list those um, in the office there. But again, the other um, you know, thing that I can't really emphasize enough is to go out there and inquire yourself. Um, you know, companies do indeed recruit through universities and such, but they also really respond well to folks who reach out to them directly, who say, I wanna work here. I wanna understand what kind of business you do. I wanna be part of your team and then they will you know, pick you up in that manner. So don't, and one of the challenges of course, is when you rely upon uh, the career services office is other folks see that as well. And so you have more competition. And so by going direct to the company, you demonstrate to them that you are showing initiative, that you really wanna work for them and have the opportunity with them. And they will be much more likely to, uh, to pick you up from there. Okay, thanks Mark. Um, Another question that came in is uh, if you can address the difference between aerospace and mechanical and electrical, and I'm assuming that's uh, the engineering types, aerospace engineering, mechanical and electrical engineering. Uh, this person, Luke, was told that aerospace was once or was a combination of both mechanical and electrical. <clears throat> Yeah, it is. And there's no clear line between them per se. Um, you know, oftentimes if you're working in an uh, advanced manufacturing, aerospace manufacturing environment and such, you are an ME, a mechanical engineer. Um, depending on the application of your knowledge, um, you may also be an electrical engineer. So there's, a, there's no cut and dried line for that, but rather it depends on the company and what their needs are for the skills. And an aerospace engineer is definitely more focused upon working in the aerospace industry. Um, you know, their discipline prepares them for that per se, but you know, MEs and EEs and the other types of engineers and stuff also fit well into these enterprises just based upon the skill sets that they bring and you know what their knowledge base is. So there's no you know there's no cut and dried line on that. And, and again, if you have questions, um, reach out to the company and have that conversation with their HR department. Have that conversation with their professional engineers about what it is they do, so you can learn more about what their daily work looks like, what kind of projects they take on, um, you know what kind of computer applications and platforms they have to work in and such. And that way you can be better prepared when you eventually make that transition um, into employment. And hopefully it can also um, inform, you know, the, some of your course taking. If you're early enough in your, uh, you know, university career while you're still studying, um, that can really shape the types of courses that you take. If you have the opportunity to take any electives and such, or the projects that you work on within your, your core programming, um, you can really fine tune those to, um, to, you know, to lead more into the job that you're seeking to get at a particular company. Um, sometimes companies even help to um, students who are studying something to help pay for their work if they're working on a project in a class that benefits that company. So there's all kinds of different ways in which you can engage with a company um, to offer value to them, and they can certainly help you out as well. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Oh, um, one other question that I uh, had that I, as you were talking about internships, one of the old uh, Kind of conundrums that comes up is you need experience to get experience it's like the chicken and the egg with internships is there anything that would like prohibit someone from pursuing an internship without having too much experience or is that kind of the expectation that you may not have a lot of experience for an internship yeah the expectation that if you're bringing students in is that um you'll be teaching them on the job and that, that's part of the deal. You're, but you're bringing your own native skills with you. You've, you've learned something, you've been in class already and such, and so you've got the ability to learn and you've got some baseline knowledge, but they don't expect you to walk into an internship um, you know, fully formed with all the information that they're gonna need to hire in a full-time employee. Um, it's a two-way street. You're learning the job and they're learning about you and they're providing an opportunity to have a, you know, a glimpse of that next generation of talent. Oftentimes, um, businesses are having a hard time right now recruiting talent. There's a lot of companies out there that are hiring and there's just not as many people coming through the pipeline. 
as there have been in years past. So really, it's a, it's a great opportunity for you to, you know, to get yourself in front of employers and show them that you, know, you can grow into a good employee, that you've got the, the basic skills needed, and they bring you in and help to teach you how to you know, succeed in their environment, um, they'd more than likely be happy to hire you at the end of your uh, college career when that degree is in your hand. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we got some dialogue going in the chat. Um, one other question that I had was, uh, do you have, just based on the state of the aerospace industry right now and your outlook, do you have any predictions like coming up in the near future that would benefit this younger generation going into the workforce? Like, is, has there been any changes that you see favoring students who will be entering the workforce in the, in the coming years? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, the, the most baseline skill to have at this point in time is technology. That technology is threaded through every single job in the economy at this point in time. And so the more adept you are with applications of technology in your daily work, the more successful you're going to be, the better able you're going to be to, to work in all the varying environments that are out there. And so having those baseline technological skills and continue to advance those and get more exposure um, across the board to different platforms and different ways of utilizing technology is going to be a benefit. Um, something often overlooked in, in the labor market and uh, in the, in the job markets out there with a, a lot of folks now is also the practical application of interpersonal skills in the workplace that you know, just knowing what the formula is in the computer platform is not enough. You've also got to sit down on a team and work well with others. And uh, it's kind of one of those things you learn in kindergarten. You've got to play well with others. And that pretty much stands true you know, all, all through your, your, your career and education and out in the workforce. And if you're a proven person who can um, critically think and problem solve and work effectively on a team, that is worth gold in the job market right now. You combine that with solid technical skills and you will have a pathway to success for as long as you, you know, seek to, to be employed. So really be thinking about that as well. And how do you demonstrate that to employers? How do you show them that you have indeed successfully worked on projects with others? You know, oftentimes I imagine that many of you are working in project-based environments and classes and courses and being able to demonstrate that when you apply for a job or when you write your resume and highlight those types of skills and things you've worked on successfully is critically important. Um, again, it's not enough just to sit in a cubicle and just do your work and stare at a computer screen. And who wants to do that anyways, right? Rather, um, you need to demonstrate that you can work successfully with other people in order to reach goals together, you know, hit the targets, finish projects, and move on to the next thing. Thanks, Mark. Um, we're nearing the end of the session. Um, I wanted to open up and see if you had any uh, final thoughts that you wanted to share or impart with uh, this college student audience. Um, before the end of the session? Yeah, I did. I, I, thanks again for, for letting me be part of this. I really appreciate this. This is such a critical sector in our national economy and, and again, around the entire world. Um, aerospace is going to be here for the long haul. And if you step foot into this realm, um, there's so many possibilities that are out there. So I really encourage you to be thinking about this industry in particular. Um, you know, the United States has, has got a leg up. We've made a lot of advances in aerospace over the years, um, you know, starting with the Wright brothers, of course, and just moving on since then. And this, uh, um, the work ahead of us uh, with regard to space exploration is super exciting. Um, but even the work on the ground of just being able to figure out how best to utilize all the different materials that are out there, new technologies being brought to bear um, is, is critically important. So it's, it's really exciting. There's a lot of opportunity. I really encourage you to explore it. And again, to engage with employers to learn more about this, um, not just reading about it online, but actually talking to businesses about what it is they do and see how excited they get about the work they're doing. There's nothing like talking to a, a company owner or someone who works for the company who's very passionate about it and you know, kind of getting um, excited alongside them with the work they're doing. So I really encourage you to do that, just to you know, get out there, work outside your comfort zone, talk to people, and, uh, and get your feet wet in this industry. It's a critical one, it's very important, and it is definitely gonna be here for the long haul. So um, appreciate, again, the time here today. Thank you, Noe. Thanks, Haley. I uh, hope you guys have a great conference. Thank you, Mark.